bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Let us hear. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Lord, have mercy upon us, standing by our hearts with Jesus Lord. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. shall not commit murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, standing by our hearts in Jesus' love. You shall not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, standing by shall not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, standing by our hearts in Jesus' love. You shall not be a false witness. Lord, have mercy upon us, standing by You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and thine all things are lost in our hearts. We If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life.
A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I form for myself, so that they might declare my praise. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people of God. The psalm appointed to be read today is Psalm 126. We will read it responsively by the whole verse. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then is our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad to be. Restore our for- fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who shed tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. A reading from Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of the Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, These I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what, what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of, of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people of God. Thank you, God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Every group has folks who just want to go back. And we see it everywhere. Whether the group is a political party a civic organization, or even a church. There are persons who want to turn the clock back, no matter what the current circumstances. They always want to go back to the way they remember things used to be, whether things really were that way or not. Gus Harris, my very first mentor as a pastor, used to call such folks the Back to Egypt Committee. He so named them for the Israelites who always called for turning back to Egypt whenever the trek to the promised land got a little tough. Well, in our epistle lesson this morning from Paul's letter to the Philippians, Paul confronts his own back to Egypt committee. This particular committee of early Christians wanted the church to remain a Jewish sect. No Gentiles need apply unless they first became Jews. And this meant strict adherence to the Old Covenant, which included not just the kosher laws, but also circumcision. Well, to combat this backward look, Paul challenges them to go forward, not back. And he starts the challenge by reminding the congregation that his own past is far superior to theirs. In other words, his credentials as an observant and superlatively faithful Jew, are impeccable. As an infant, he had been circumcised on the eighth day. He was a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born to Hebrews. He had been a Pharisee, a zealous advocate of his faith, so zealous, in fact, that he had persecuted Christians for not being Jewish enough. If anyone had a reason to go back, he had more. Something had happened to Paul. He had been encountered by the living Christ. And now, going forward with Christ was all that mattered. 
He had found something in Christ that he had not found in the faith of his fathers. Three things, in fact, that you and I can have as well. And the first thing that Paul found in Christ was this. He found freedom. Paul clearly... Good Lord, I've done it again. There we go. Now it's in order. Anyway, Paul found freedom. <laughs> you know, he had spent much of his life trying to save himself through strict adherence to the law. But somehow it just wasn't enough. And it never is. Being good, simply because it is required, has no saving power. That was the discovery that Paul made. Keeping the law for its own sake would never fill his deepest spiritual hunger. And it wasn't for lack of trying. Paul had kept the law. By all rights, he had earned whatever benefits would come to him from God that way. And yet, this had only left him empty. A fact that he realized that day Christ encountered him on the road to Damascus. Being good, according to the law, just to get God's favor, has no power to transform a life. Such tit-for-tat bargaining of our behavior for God's favor will never cause your life or mine to actually live Paul had discovered that the spiritual Egypt of strict adherence to the law of religion to win God's favor was nothing but a kind of slavery. The gift of God's unmerited favor given through that encounter with Christ had set him free, free from worrying about salvation, free from having to earn God's love, free from wondering if he'd done enough or lived the standards enough, sacrificed enough. That's where real freedom is found. Not in being good for goodness sake, but in an encounter with Jesus Christ where we simply accept his favor. In such acceptance, we become free to be good and to do good. Free because now we do it out of love and gratitude to the one who has set us free. Full of a, a loving and grateful desire to do good. We don't earn God's favor. We are gifted with it in Jesus Christ. And that sets us free. Free from guilt Free from self-focused, fear-driven religion. That was the first thing that Paul found. Freedom. And the second thing Paul found in Christ was this. He found unconditional love. Paul discovered what it is to be loved unconditionally. It's not a big surprise that many people of faith believe that God's favor and love are conditional, subject to approval, and subject to revocation. Many have been raised with that message clearly proclaimed, and it often starts in the earliest years. As children, we are constantly seeking approval from the significant people in our lives, if those significant people show their approval for us only when we do things right, then the message that we get is that when we are good, then we are lovable. And when we are not good, well, then we are not lovable. Love, then, we learn, is something that we earn. If we have to live up, to someone's expectations to win their love. That's 
conditional love. Rigid obedience to the law of God as a condition of God's approval makes God's love conditional. The message of such faith is, I love you only when you are absolutely obedient, only when you are sinless, only when you measure up to my standards. Can you imagine what a great, giant leap of understanding happened when Paul was able to write these words in his letter to the Romans? But God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That is unconditional love. There is life-changing power in that kind of love. Maxine Waters is a member of, the, of Congress. Her district is centered in Watts in Los Angeles. I taught school for a short time in her district. Maxine once shared that one of the very first people who made a real difference in her life was her fifth grade math teacher. The teacher's name was Louise Carter. Waters said, beyond her skill at teaching math, Ms. Carter was a very loving woman. Waters recalls one Saturday morning in particular, Ms. Carter had planned a class picnic, a really rare treat for kids in her economic strata. However, Waters' mother had not been able to get little Maxine ready in time to go. Waters had 12 older brothers and sisters, and it was quite a chore for her mother to get them all prepared, especially the girls, because it required that she spend time getting their hair all braided. Her mother was so busy just working her way down the line, trying to do everything, that she just hadn't gotten the little Maxine yet. Waters was crushed knowing that she would be left behind. Then Ms. Carter came, says the congresswoman. She would not leave without me. She took me to her own home and washed and braided my hair herself and got my clothes together so I could go on that picnic. And it stayed with me forever that she would do that. I wasn't her best student. I wasn't even all that noticeable. But if you think that a teacher really cares about you, then you want to live up to their expectations. You want to please them and make them happy. Ms. Carter had high expectations for me. And especially after that picnic, I tried my best to live up to them. That's something of the picture of our relationship with God. God loves us even when we are unlovable. God takes us into his home, his presence, and he washes us clean, as it were. God accepts us just as we are, because, and because we know that we are loved already. No preconditions, no fear of rejection, no constant reapproval process. We want to live up to God's expectations. We live a life that is worthy, not to earn God's love, but as a result of that love. Unconditional love was the second thing that Paul found in Christ. And here's the third. Paul found life itself. After his encounter with Christ, Paul had a life that was so much more than just a living. Our lives often be con consumed with just making a living, filled with small purposes and little dreams. That may be a living, but it's not a life, not as Christ gives us to live life. All of us have lesser goals and purposes from which we gain certain satisfaction in life, but these all tend to wear thin at some point. 
especially in midlife or at retirement. We will often find these things to no longer quench the inner thirst of our, or the driving hunger that they once did. Such dreams and purposes can concern our jobs or our social positions or our desires to achieve social prominence or recognition in some field or to just gain success in an endeavor in home or in relationships. When these no longer speak to us as they once did or when we conclude that we have reached our limit Dreams can die, and purposes grow stale. But it is at just such a time that the larger purposes of Christ can renew us and draw us out and up again. At just such moments, we can ask Christ for a new vision, a new way of seeing our lives and our works and our hopes. God has always had greater and more wondrous purposes and plans for each one of us than any of us have ever even dared to dream. If the dreams that fired your past no longer satisfy as they once did, it's not because you weren't big enough for them. They weren't big enough for you. Christ stands beside you, ready for you to ask, wanting to share with you and me God's vision for the rest of our lives, the vision that will fill our living with life. Now let's listen to the Apostle Paul's words from our text. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul discovered that there's no ceiling with discipleship. There is no limit on growing closer to God. We can grow to be better followers of Christ at 70 and 80, and on, than ever we were at 20 or at 40. We can be more loving, more joyous, more focused. The mistake that too many folks have made is taking their identity from a career or an endeavor rather than from Christ. If our dream is to be more like Christ, we will never reach the point where we will wear that out. Where we will be forced to say, this is it, it's as far as I can go. For Paul, there was no turning back, no winding down, no giving up. He had discovered freedom. He had found unconditional love. And in Christ, he had found life filled with life. It's all there for you and for me, too, in Christ. Call upon him. He already loves you as you are right now. Catch from him the vision of the upward way. Go forward for life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us confess our trust in God by reciting the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Life from life, true God from true God, 
begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I do believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the prayers of the people, we will use Form 1. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <coughs> for the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all God's peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Anne and Peter, our bishops, for Rick, our priests, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Barack, our president, Pat, our governor, and Jay, our mayor, for all the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our town of Reedsville, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widows, widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord for Mary and Sacred, Bob Love, Jimmy Trotter, Karen Ferguson, Micheline Martin, Lindsay Hicks, Don and Nancy Gore, Mary Coy Sigmund, Ezra Robinson, Jan Carver, Jody Winwood, Debbie Sigmund, Jean Horseman, Peter Palmer, Sammy Gladys Piazza. Nancy Scott, Reed Apple, George Arnold, Tony Craddock, Teresa Craddock, Richard Piazza, and Lori Thorne. Lord have mercy. For all have died for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Dean Craddock, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord for those serving in the armed forces of our nation. Randy Williamson, Ethan Rogers, Heather Meyer of Guyana, Jericho of Guyana, Bo and Patty Buffet, Spencer and Manet Wilson, Ralph Lee Clayton, Michael McCloskey, Ben Shepard, Wesley Welch, Jim and April Donovan, Chris Miles, Robert Murray, Caleb Buck, Roger Bevere Jr., Hunter Morrell, James Perry, Jonathan Romero, Claire Frazier, and Hannah Drew. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope Without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, and for all the blessings of this life, 
and we give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week. Ellis Fulton, Elizabeth Hugh, Michael Walker, Bill Post Jr., and Steve Worth. Lord, we thank you. In the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Thomas, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. from home. We're glad you're able to join us. A uh, couple of things. First of all, let me congratulate all of you who are here this morning for remembering to set your clocks. Uh, good for you. And um, we'll, we'll just see who shows up at the door at the end of the service. Um, at, to that end, though, I should say that there's an announcement near the back, uh, in the back pages that you, uh, well, it suggests that we want to set our clock forward next Sunday, I suggest you ignore that one. <laughs> Weird as that one. Uh, there's also the Holy Week uh, schedule, and which is on the very, uh, just inside the back page. Uh, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. We will be assembling, Lord willing, and the weather is nice to us, We'll be assembling outside on the lawn for this service, and uh, we'll do the, the uh, ceremony of the palms, and the blessing of the palms will process in, and uh, then we'll go ahead with the Passion Gospel and all of that. It's a really spectacular morning, and I hope you can all be here for it. Uh, but that also means that starting not this week, but Holy Week, uh, right after Palm Sunday, uh, there are all the community services as well as services that go on. Something is happening every single day, and there's a list there of uh, where and how and when and all that sort of thing in the bulletin. I did want to say one other thing, and that is that um, yesterday's Unity March Against Violence was awesome. Uh, there, we started out here in our parking lot, and we moved down Lindsay Way all the way to the end of Lindsay, uh, hung a left at uh, Marcellus and went down to St. Paul. Thank you for that quick help there. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we, the, the, I would say, let's see, there were somewhere between 70 and 100 people that showed up for it. Uh, 
at every place where there had been an act of violence along the way, we all stopped and one of the pastors in the group would stand up and, and pray for a cessation of violence, for a blessing upon the victims and, and, uh, and so forth as we went. I was personally shocked at how many places we stopped. Um, but out of that group, there were somewhere about nine or ten of us here from St. Thomas. So uh, we had a pretty good representation in the group, especially percentage-wise. Uh, one thing that I, I confess I had some real pride about was that there were three rather fine young men that were standing at the very front of the group, uh, Sam being one of them, uh, and two of his good buddies, and they took turns carrying our cross to lead the entire uh, procession through the streets. Uh, at, at, the, at the very end, some of us, there were shuttle buses to get everybody back. There were a few of us that decided to walk back because they had given us goodies and we kind of needed to walk back. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, any other special announcements this morning? Jim? Uh, well, well uh, um, no, well, yes, I mean, all the ones that are happening here, but uh, not at some of the other churches. I will be attending a couple of them, though. Yes. Oh, so our last Lenten dinner is happening this Wednesday night, and I believe, what did I hear the menu is going to be? Did we tell them? It's going to be a baked potato bar. Yeah, so uh, if you like baked potatoes, if they're off your diet except for, you know, this is a holy cause. <laughs> you, can, you can have it on Wednesday night. So uh, anyway, that, that's this Wednesday night at, in our uh, fellowship hall. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you, Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, 
incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We, we praise you, you, we bless you, we give thanks, thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Blessed Thomas and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them, and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Ever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all good things, we open. Come to this high table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, that in thy manifold and great mercy we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all good things, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your love and care and assuring us of your gift of eternal life and uniting us with the blessed company of all faithful people. Therefore, ever-living God, keep us steadfast in your holy fellowship. And now we offer ourselves all that we have and are to serve you faithfully in the world through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and then. Amen. down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this, your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> You know, that one hour made a huge difference on me. <laughs> Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>